what this means? This is important. Do you know what this means? You want to quit your job and become a sculptor? No. You're going to hit me in the face with that. No. This mountain shape reminds you of a close encounter you had with visitors from another planet, and just looking at it makes you want to somehow, some way, find your way back to that place so that your mind can finally be at peace? No. It means I like mashed potatoes a lot. Oh. And also the second thing. <laughs> yeah, isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, I don't like starch either. Oh, hey there! I'm MC Haggis, and this here is my beatbox and partner Seamus McFamous. Give him a sample, Seamus. Ah. No, why not? Ah. Oh, oh that's right. You see, folks, Seamus here got a paper cut on his tongue from looking a birthday card envelope, and now he can't beatbox. Oh, ah. oh, yeah. Can you put that back in your mouth? You look like a thirsty basset hound. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. All right, well, that's bad for Seamus, but good timing for us. You see, this month we're learning about grit. Yeah, refusing to give up when life gets bad. So we're not going to give up on rapping today, even though Seamus has a hurt tongue. Ah. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't. We don't need to say that anymore. Okay, so how can you do the beat another way? Let's think. Let's put our thinking caps on. Ooh, how about snapping fingers? Now nah, that's too Wayne Newton. Oh, oh, <laughs> are you gonna literally beat the box like? <laughs> oh, no, that's too country, too country. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got? All right, ooh, this looks good. Hey, no, that's too noisy. Hey, no, that ain't it. No comment. All right. Oh, I think he's got it by George. I think he's got it. Let's kick it. Cause he couldn't beat box riffs. Seamus thought he'd have to quit, but he found something quite legit. He's refusing to give up when life gets hard and that's grit. Oh yeah, smooth as sandpaper. Ha <laughs> ha, word! <laughs> Way to go, Seamus, you're such an awesome example of grit. <laughs> now, you know what we did, yeah, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> now let's move on out, Pilgrim, huh? Yeah, there we go, there we go, yeah! Why do you yell, yeah?
I'll never stop climbing, climbing, no I'll never stop moving, moving I'll never stop fighting, fighting I'll never stop climbing, climbing Cause I've got a long way to go Whoa. I'm gonna fight like you wouldn't believe I'll shine my light for the world to see I'll never give up, no Welcome to Story Lab! This week we're talking about grit while we take a look at the story of someone whose life went from bad to good fast enough to make your head spin. Oh, and there's this. Here it goes. I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about grit, which is refusing to give up when life gets hard. What's under the plates? I don't know, actually. How do you not know? Well, today's story includes a mysterious dream with food. So, mystery food challenge! Oh, oh, th uh, this is great. Those plates could be filled with all sorts of awesome, weird flavored gummies. Well, I got my friend to set it up for us. You know what? Why don't you do the honors? Oh. <clears throat> Mystery vegetable challenge. The mystery vegetable challenge. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this, all the way from my taste buds down to my stomach. Oh, come on. Vegetables can be tasty. Only with ranch dressing. Oh, do we get ranch? Um, I don't know. Let me see. Okay, it says here that we each pick a dish, then we see who can finish eating whatever vegetable they get. I don't know. Come on, you can totally do this. Grit, remember? Can I cook mine with bacon? <laughs> Just pick. Fine. Here it goes. Ooh, that's a lot of carrots. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna beat you. <laughs> you don't even know what your veggie is yet. Yeah, but I like vegetables. They're good for you. Just pick. All right. <laughs> Yum. Yum. Oh, this is great. Let's go. You like vegetables, right? Yeah. On your marks. Get set. Go! Mm-hmm. 
I'm on there. I'm gonna beat you. Uh -oh. I won. I won. I won. I'm the first master. And I think it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God created the whole amazing world, but people turned away and broke their relationship with God. Still, God had a plan. God called Abraham and Sarah and promised to bless the whole world through their family line. One of Abraham's great grandkids, Joseph, was sold into slavery in Egypt by his own brothers and then thrown in prison even though he done nothing wrong. But even there, God was with him and Joseph didn't give up. That's where our story starts. Take it away, Brian. Hey everyone. Well, we are at the bottom of the roller coaster in Joseph's life. <laughs> Let's find out if it gets any better. During his time in prison, Joseph had interpreted the dream of Pharaoh's drink taster and asked the man to put in a good word for him, you remember? But the drink taster forgot, until two years later, when Pharaoh called his advisors together. I had two dreams last night. Who can tell me what they mean? No one could help Pharaoh, until the drink taster, aha, finally remembered Joseph. Pharaoh called for Joseph at once. Now. <laughs> It must have been a serious shock to be pulled out of prison after so many years and marched straight into the palace. I've heard you can tell what dreams mean. Oh, I can't do it. But God will give the answer. I saw seven fat cows come out of the river, but then seven thin, ugly cows came up after and ate the fat cows. After that, I dreamed about seven full heads of grain on a stem. Seven weak, thin heads grew up after them and swallowed up the seven good heads. God has shown you what will happen. Seven good years with plenty of food are coming, but then seven years without enough food will follow. Pharaoh should look for a wise, understanding man to take charge and store some of the food in the good years so there will be food to use later. God has made all this known to you. I'm putting you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Think about it. It had been years from the time Joseph's brothers sold him until he was taken out of prison. And then, in a single morning, he was made second in the command of the whole land of Egypt. Joseph traveled all over Egypt and helped to store up grain during the seven plentiful years. And when the years of hunger began, Pharaoh sent everyone to Joseph to buy food. Now, the famine spread far beyond Egypt. It even reached into Canaan where Joseph's father Jacob and Joseph's brothers lived. And they soon became desperate for something to eat. I've heard there's grain in Egypt. Go buy some for us so we won't die. Jacob would not let his youngest son, Benjamin, go. But the older 10 brothers made the long journey to Egypt and came before Joseph. Joseph's brothers bowed down to him, just as Joseph had dreamed about so long before. We've come to buy grain. We're hungry. Joseph recognized them, but they did not know who he was. So Joseph decided to test them. You're spies. No, we were 12 brothers, sons of one man in the land of Canaan. Our youngest brother is now with our father, and one brother is gone. Joseph continued to test his brothers. He ordered them to leave Simeon behind, return home, and come back with Benjamin as proof of their innocence. Joseph had their sacks filled with grain and sent them away. Along the way, the brothers discovered that their money had been returned. When they arrived home, they showed Jacob the grain and told him everything that had happened. We have to take Benjamin back with us. Joseph is gone, Simeon is gone, I won't let you take Benjamin. Uh, at first, Jacob refused to let Benjamin go, but soon, all the grain brought from Egypt was gone. Go back, buy us a little more food. The man warned us we can't return without Benjamin. I promise to keep him safe. All right, but take gifts along. Take twice the money. May God cause this man to show you mercy. Once again, the brothers made the long trek to Egypt, this time with Benjamin. Whew. When they arrived, Joseph ordered that the brothers be taken to his own house, where a special meal was prepared. Is your father still living? 
He is alive and well. When Joseph heard that his father was still alive and saw his younger brother Benjamin, he was so moved, he left the room and wept. Then a short time later, at last, Joseph told his brothers who he was. I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. But don't be angry with yourselves. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. Then Joseph hugged his brothers and wept. He forgave them. He told them to return to Canaan and bring Jacob and the rest of the families to live in Egypt where they would have enough food. And that's exactly what happened. Joseph's entire family packed up and traveled to Egypt. Joseph finally saw his father Jacob again. The whole family settled in a place called Goshen and had enough to eat through the rest of the famine. Mm -mm. The end. That is epic. I mean, Joseph's brothers did something terrible. Yeah, but God flipped it upside down. God made sure that Joseph was in the right place at the right time with the power to save his whole family. Yeah, that's right. Jacob's family actually became the Israelites. And remember, God promised to bless the whole world through them. In fact, hundreds of years later, Jesus was born into Jacob's family line. Through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, every single one of us can be forgiven. Phew. So what's our part in this story? Well, Joseph held on through some difficult times, right? But all those hard pieces ended up leading to something amazing. So we can look at how God worked in Joseph's story and trust that God is at work in our lives too. Oh yeah, absolutely. God is big enough and amazing enough to take something that seems awful and still work out a good ending. Like if you have to move away from your friends. Or maybe you get sick right before a big trip you've been super excited about. God can see the bigger story, even if we can't. God knows how things will be made right in the end. Yeah, we might just have to wait a little longer than we like. You know what? I think you two got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on because there's a bigger story and that can give you grit. You really don't have to finish that. Oh, you bet I am, because the bigger story for this broccoli is sauteed with some bacon. Well, we can't finish without finding out what's in the last dish. Oh, go for it. Seriously? Don't worry. <laughs> I got this. Watch this. Impressive. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. All right, Whoa. let's go find some bacon. of the squirrel smell. It was that easy. <laughs> oh, hey everybody, I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So-and-So Show. Hey, today we've got a very special game to play. John, I'm Brandon. Uh, yes? <gasps> You've got to come with me at once. And who are you? Oh, <laughs> of course, uh, apologies. Yeah. I am Dr. Tan oh, at your service. Well, welcome to the show, Doc. What kind of a doctor are you? <laughs> Never mind. Listen, your studio is in danger. Danger? Yes, I've come from the past. You what? Travel through time to get to you. I have waited my entire life for somebody to say that to me. Am I dreaming? 
Ouch! You're supposed to pinch yourself to see if you're trimming, not someone else. Oh. Ow! Um, listen, we are wasting time here. Uh, Your younger selves are about to turn this basement into an arcade. Oh, oh that's kind of cool. Yeah. No, 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 not cool. Because if it turns into an arcade, then it will never become a studio. And the so-and-so show will never exist. Oh! Oh! Ha -ha. Ha -ha. It's time! I have set this alarm to precisely 17 seconds before we need to leave. Oh. Now, put these on! Oh. Oh. Quickly! Okay, okay. Cool. Quickly! Uh huh, uh huh. Right. Here we go. Okay. Grab my hands. Uh -huh. John, huh? press the button for huh? us. Now? No! The John and Brandon Show, episode one, take one, marker. Okay, go. You're supposed to say action. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Action. Not now, John, we've already ruined this take. Oh, so uh, start over? Yeah, here, let me do it. The John and Brandon Show, episode one, take two, marker. Action. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Oh, man. Sorry. What are we doing, Brandon? We don't know anything about making a, a show. I know, but I thought it would be fun to make your basement into a studio. Yeah, but it's, it's too hard. Let's try something else, something easy. Like an arcade? Like an arcade! Yeah. 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 Do I know you? You seem familiar. Uh, yes, I... I am... How do I explain this without altering the entire course of my life? It's you! Your future self! All grown up! See? The hairline, the baggy eyes, the wrinkly lips... Okay! <laughs> I'm not that old. But he's right, kid. I... am you. Cool! Super cool. So what happens? Do I become an astronaut, an, an actor, an underwater uh, drummer? Oh, I totally forgot about underwater drumming. No, no, no. But uh, you know what? I really don't want to tell you everything that happens because if I do, it'll ruin half the fun of your journey. Uh, uh, well, let's just say that this basement comes in real handy. Ah, the arcade. I knew yeah. that was a good idea. Actually, not the arcade. A studio. Nah, we already tried that. It's too hard. Oh, well, hey, at least you tried. Yeah. Yeah. No, hold on. You, you can't give up on something just because it's hard. You, yeah. You've got to keep going. Yeah, because there are things that happen to you in the future that you don't know about yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah like uh, if you don't keep going, then you're going to miss out on some of the, the greatest things that have ever happened to you. Like, mm -hmm. you'll get to spend all this time hanging out with your best friend. <laughs> and, and you get to meet a lot of exciting new people and play games and learn about God. I don't know. Yeah, he's right. Well, I guess we could give it one more try. Oh, yeah. And we could put a desk right here and sit behind it like real show hosts. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? You could really make a difference in the world, and you couldn't do that if you played in an arcade all day. <laughs> we don't really know how to make a real show. We haven't known how to do that for five years! Oh. But hey, listen. Remember what our great Uncle Spaghetti Todd used to say? Yeah. You don't have to unravel the whole bowl of noodles before, before you eat! eat. <laughs> yeah, right! Sometimes you just gotta go for it. Yeah, yeah, let's do it! Oh. Oh. Close enough, close enough. You did it! We did it! You yeah. saved oh. the studio! Jump! Jump, rabbits! It's time! Oh. Oh. We have to return you! To the future! Okay, okay. Well, uh, John, you know what to do. Yeah. Here, press this button. Sure. Go for it. Oh, oh, one more thing. You have to change the name of the show. It should be called The Sewing. Oh. Oh. Change the name of the show? To what? Uh, I don't know. He said the, uh, the, the sew and sew show or something like that. 
We'll just use that as a placeholder. Yeah, until we get something way better. It's time for Bible story time with Kellen. Who's Kellen? Hey, hey guys, um, listen, unfortunately something has come up and I can't be with you all today, but don't worry, everything's fine. And I don't wanna leave you all high and dry. So I asked my good friend Cameron and he's gonna take over for me today. All right, take it away, Cameron. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going good. Yeah, yeah, we just time traveled and saved the show. So, you know, pretty good day. What about you, Cameron? Just getting ready for another awesome Bible story. You guys ready? Absolutely. Today, we're learning more about Joseph, whose story is written down in the book of Genesis. Joseph was born into a big family. He had 10 older brothers. His father, Jacob, loved Joseph more than his brothers and treated him extra special. He gave Joseph a beautiful, expensive coat with many colors. Joseph had dreams that one day, his older brothers would bow down to him. So his brothers became angry and jealous of Joseph. One day they teamed up against him, took him away and sold him into slavery to some traders headed for Egypt. Joseph's brothers let their father believe Joseph had been eaten by a wild animal. While he was enslaved, Joseph was accused of something that he didn't do, and he was thrown into prison. Joseph spent years in prison forgotten and alone. One person who forgot about Joseph was the Egyptian King Pharaoh's chief wine taster. He'd been in prison with Joseph and Joseph had told him what his dreams meant. But when the wine taster went back to work for the Pharaoh, he forgot all about Joseph until two years later. Pharaoh himself wanted someone to tell him what his dreams meant. The wine taster finally remembered and so Joseph was brought to Pharaoh. Joseph, I've heard that when you hear a dream, you can explain it. I can't do it, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he wants. Pharaoh told Joseph his dreams, one about cows and one about grain. And with God's help, Joseph told Pharaoh what his dreams meant. God has shown you what will happen. Seven good years with plenty of food are coming, but then seven years without enough food will follow. Pharaoh should look for a wise, understanding man to take charge and store some of the food in the good years so there will be food to use later. God has made all this known to you? I'm putting you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh gave Joseph the royal ring that he was wearing. He put fine robes around him. He gave Joseph a chariot to ride and made Joseph the second in command. Joseph traveled all throughout Egypt and helped to store grain during the seven plentiful years. Then the seven years of famine, when the land didn't produce any food, began. The famine stretched to all the surrounding lands too. And everyone who was hungry came to Joseph to buy food, including Joseph's brothers. His 10 older brothers traveled from their homeland far away. They bowed down to him just like Joseph dreamed they would. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where do you come from? The land of Canaan. We've come to buy food. You are spies. No, sir. We are all brothers. We've come to buy food. Joseph didn't reveal himself, but he gave his brothers food. And he told them that if they ever came back, they had to bring their youngest brother, Benjamin. When they ran out of food again, they brought Benjamin back to Egypt this time to Joseph's own house. When he saw his brother Benjamin, Joseph could no longer keep his secret hidden. I am your brother, Joseph, who you sold into Egypt. Don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. He made me like a father to Pharaoh and a ruler of Egypt. Now, go back to my father and tell him everything. Then Joseph hugged each of his brothers and cried over them. Pharaoh set aside the best land in Egypt for Joseph's family. Joseph was finally reunited with his father and Joseph was able to provide for all his family. Joseph had some very hard times. It would have been easy for him to give up, but he held on and God worked out even the worst circumstances for good. In the end, Joseph forgave his brothers and saved their lives. Even when Joseph couldn't see it, God was with Joseph. 
Joseph could only see his story in parts while he was living it. God could see the bigger story. Whoa. My thoughts exactly. I mean, Joseph's brothers were terrible to him. Yeah, they were. But Joseph didn't give up. God was able to make something good come out of something bad. You know, God's pretty amazing at turning things around. Totally. Yeah. Great story, Cameron. Bye. Anytime. See ya. I am glad we decided to keep going all those years ago. Otherwise, we would have missed today's story. Yeah, and they would have too. Yeah, everything turned out much better than I expected. So true. So, uh, hey, reveal the question. Oh yeah, that's good. When has something turned out better than you expected? You know, maybe you had a school project you were worried about, but then it went really well. Or uh, you had to go somewhere where you didn't know anyone and you ended up making a friend. Yeah, there are opportunities all the time for God to exceed our expectations. Absolutely. So I hope you'll join us next time. We expect it'll be amazing. <laughs> maybe not that good. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So-and-So Show. Boop, boop. That is so much better than the John and Brandon show. Yeah, it should have been the Brandon and John show anyway. Why? Uh, because my name would have come before yours. How so? Brandon and John. Brandon comes before John when I say it that way. Why? Do you really not understand what I'm... No. Ah! That one looks like you. What? That one looks like you. No, I don't see a sheep. So we're still doing this. Hey. Oh, man. <laughs>